Hello, my name is Jeremy Lewis. I work at Huntington College in the USA and I congratulate the delegates for coming together for this international seminar in St. Petersburg. I'm really sorry I can't be with you, so uh, the best way for me to contribute, I thought, was by this uh, video. So my topic is to explain the relevance of uh, open governance and transparency to the themes of the conference, to the governance of public policy, uh, to the changing administrative culture, and, uh, and how to include civil society in policy networks. The, uh, the first point I'll make is about the spread of transparency laws. Uh, initially, these were driven by the demands of the Western press in liberal democracies. In 1949, the Swedish Freedom of the Press Act. In 1966 and 74, the US Freedom of Information Acts. And then in 1979, the Canadian Access to Information Act. Uh, then uh, these uh, freedom of information laws spread to many countries in the 1980s as the issue networks that Hugh Heckler has written about spread rapidly across uh, Western liberal democracies. Um, then in the 1990s, surprisingly, with the advent of new democracies across Latin America and across Central and Eastern Europe, uh, there was a spread of interest in transparency um, new uh, regimes contrasting themselves with the old uh, regimes. Um, in the 1990s, we also found the development of electronic freedom of information, which insists that government databases, not just physical files, be published and now on the internet. Uh, and then in the 2000s, we had the development um, in advanced societies sometimes in cities or provinces, sometimes in nation states, of e-governance. And this takes the form of putting databases onto the internet um, and uh, of official records, but it also takes the form of interactive services for uh, citizens and for uh, corporations and interest groups. Um, so. Nowadays, the spread of transparency laws is uh, spread by international institutions, particularly monetary institutions, because they can require a regime of transparency laws uh, before uh, signing uh, loans to uh, countries in need. Uh, the IMF and the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, are two important ones. Um, secondly, this can be encouraged as a public value by international unions and partnerships, the two most obvious being the EU, European Union, and the Open Government Partnership. Uh, by 2015, as I speak, over 100 nations have freedom of information or access to information or transparency laws. Uh, so this is spread to half the countries in the world today. Uh, the open governance of public policy. This has potential to change administrative culture across many political systems. Uh, it takes a generation of civil servants to change. This is not uh, a fast process. It broadens public policy networks outside of government agencies to include civil society. The civil society may be very developed or less developed. That depends on the political system. It is not able to cure all the diseases of government. Corruption, inefficiency, oligarchy, lack of party competition. Because these depend also on the society and they depend on uh, a government being willing to change. But they may reduce the symptoms, and so the doctor may help the patient. Changing administrative culture. With training and experience, a new generation of officials can learn 
that official files and databases are paid for and owned by the public, not by officials. Older officials adapt more slowly. There are exceptions. National security files, most of which are still guarded, current law enforcement files, uh, medical and tax files, which contain personal identifiers. Uh, but most records in many democracies now can be uh, opened uh, uh, broadly across the range of government. Broadening the policy network. When official databases are placed on the web, interest groups can interpret the data and challenge official interpretations. Minor parties also gain information access to compete with the governing party. Universities and think tanks as well as public interest groups can compete in a policy network. That means you have a market of information for public policy. Oligarchs and large corporations have rivals for influence. In most systems they have influence in any case, but smaller institutions uh, become rivals because they have more access to information. Improving public data on policy. Transparency of public data potentially enhances. This is not guaranteed because of other factors. Public debate on policy, on policy options because more expertise is spread around society. Constructive criticism of policy solutions. Officials' understanding of society's reaction to policy, that is a feedback loop to officials. Officials' use of the budget, uh, because open budgets uh, come in for more careful consideration. And officials' use of funds from international monetary institutions. Limitations. Uh, Christopher Hood of Oxford has written at length about the uh, scepticism about transparency. Uh, it's true that it depends upon the political regime accepting open policy debate. In many systems this is not feasible. First, the current regime already may be including contributions from civil society, the free press, the free universities, think tanks, interest groups and loyal opposition parties. Secondly, a new regime uh, may open the old regime's files. The new regime has nothing to lose. Uh, an example is uh, Germany in uh, the 1990s opening the, the old Stasi files. Uh, or the current regime may adapt and tolerate competition for policy ideas and potential transformation. Uh, and they may also be required for international monetary loans. Online applications. This is the connection from transparency to e-governance. One of the most promising developments in the governance of cities and states is uh, online applications. Public data stores make databases available uh, they can uh, achieve security by keeping the public service separate from the original data to protect them from hackers. The uh, citizens and companies can make apps for the public to interpret data on mobile phones, which reaches a lot more people, or on computers. Uh, current examples are bus and train locations or timetables. Uh, budget and census mapping, or even uh, mapping the, uh, the plume of air pollution from a polluting source. But much data is too complex for the public to use. This is a fair criticism, and so uh, governments need to be selective in how they uh, choose data to put on the web and how they present it. And uh, data visualization and charting is an obvious solution. E-governance of services. 
interactive online services uh, need, uh, in the case of government to government, G to G, data links, for example, a police pursuit uh, across borders. For government to business, uh, the data needs to match the needs of business. Uh, businesses submitting data need data accuracy, integrity and security guarantees. Government to citizen or G to C. Uh, governance needs to be adapted for citizens. Uh, you have to simplify the rules for citizens to navigate applications. Uh, long forms that are too complex for individuals need to be simplified for uh, screens. Each screen needs to be designed for understanding. Uh, it's different having a professional expert uh, respond to having somebody with limited education respond. There need to be measures for the privacy of individuals and there needs to be the opportunity for one-stop shopping online so that one citizen can get all government services from the same uh, uh, screen. Okay. Uh, virtual reorganization is made possible without actually reorganizing the bureaucracies. Uh, this holds great promise to leave bureaucracies in their current structure but let them seem simplified for the citizen. How do we adapt all this to authoritarian or oligarchic regimes, which it means most of the regimes in the modern world, uh, where there may be more resistance or no opposition parties or a weak civil society with weak institutions and a strong government controlled by uh, few officials? One approach is to seek the less controversial e-governance first. Okay? Data store apps for transport, mapping, or uh, do these before the pollution databases. Uh, interactive city services may be non-controversial uh, to a national government. Uh, interactive applications for housing, welfare, and health services uh, may be uh, popular and may even save money uh, from the point of view of the government. Non-binding policy forums and wikis, those have been tried. Uh, the limitations are that the useful comments generally come from uh, people with uh, expertise and those often are interest groups and corporations and universities, the same people that already have access to uh, government. Uh, nonetheless, these may get uh, better over time. And the publication of laws, policies, budgets and explanations is an obvious one. The government can explain itself to uh, the public, uh, particularly through intermediaries such as uh, newspapers and, uh, and, and news, uh, journals. Okay. Um, and reports on the progress of the operation of administration, even where these are of course controlled by government, still a useful function uh, for civil society. So the goal of this operation is efficient governance uh, rather than threatening or exposing the regime. That is uh, going to meet much less resistance in its implementation. How do we adapt to poorer states? Uh, international rankings can encourage governments to improve public values in rivalry with others rather than forcing change. So uh, Freedom House, Transparency International, the UN Development Report, the Brookings Institution, the Gates Foundation, and the OECD, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, that is the, the 34 rich countries. Um, secondly, uh, international grants, aid, loans, and subsidies may uh, provide uh, technology to developing countries, uh, computers, software, networks, database expertise, and uh, sometimes uh, developing countries can skip a generation of technology um, and that sometimes helps them more than, uh, than, than richer countries. Uh, for example, e-governance and uh, online finance for cell phones 
which may av be available in the cities of a poor country where there are no landline phones and uh, previous generation of infrastructure technology does not exist. And the uh, satellite internet is another possibility where there are no cables. So uh, I've just thrown out some ideas. I hope these are useful for your seminar. I hope they can stimulate discussion and I wish you uh, a very good productive debate uh, in your seminar over the weekend.